Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Abby Teleria coming to you live from Melissa Data's headquarters in Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Our webinar today is Know Your Contact Info is Accurate, Clean, and Reliable with Listware for Excel. Joining me today is our resident data quality expert, Tony Deacon. He'll demonstrate the contact cleansing capabilities of Listware by verifying and correcting your customer contacts directly in Excel. But before we jump right in, I highly encourage everyone to submit questions. You can type those in at any time during the presentation. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the demo. Also, I wanted to let you know that this webinar is going to be recorded. So if you miss anything or you want to forward to someone, you'll be able to do so. So we've got a lot to cover. I'm going to hand off the mic to Tony. Tony? Thank you, Abby. And thank you all for coming. Today we're going to discuss Melissa Data web services that you can consume using Listware for Excel add-in. The uh, Melissa Data has had the been doing address verification and validation for like 20 years now, and specialize in U.S. and Canada for many years. And now we're branching out as well into global and international addressing. For, for many years now, we've run web services where we have servers on-site, off-site, and in clusters across the country that are running our, our proprietary web services. And previously, the only way you could consume the web services was programmatically. So you would have to be a programmer, and you'd have to write a program to send your data to our servers and to retrieve it back. And normally, this was only for people doing hundreds of thousands or millions of records. Though these services we run 24-7, 365 days a year. So we've made a plug-in for Excel, since just about everybody has that program in Microsoft Office, that can let you hit our personator web services without having to be a programmer and without having to write any code. The personator web service is a combination of all of our other web services and can be used to not only verify your data and check it, but also to append new data that you don't already have. You can use it to fix mismatched, incomplete, outdated data where you don't know if you have correct data. Again, the point being that having terrible data doesn't actually save you any money, and it's it's probably cheaper for you to get rid of bad records rather than trying to market to people that either don't exist or have moved or are deceased. Using these web services, you'll be able to verify the name, the address. You can also use other services to find new address if the people have moved. But we'll go on. We'll go into detail on that in upcoming webinars. This one, we're going to do the basics of just how to get it installed and how to use it. I've made some slides here that show basically what we're going to do, and I'm just going to kind of whiz through these, and then we'll do the whole thing again for real on the website and in the program. So this is just to give you an idea, and then I'll do another demo where we actually show it. So on melissadata.com, you'll have to create a free account and sign into it. If you don't already have an account, you can click on sign in, and there are steps to create the account. It's free, and then you'll be able to download Listware for Excel, and it generates a license string you can use. Listware for Excel shows up in your Excel program as a new tab. You'll see once you've installed it. So the first step, you'd go to melissadata.com, and then sign in, and then go to My Account, and you'll find under there your credit balance. Listware uses a credit system, so you can purchase credits and then just use them as you go, kind of a pay as you go, so you can process one record, 10 record, 1,000 records, and you don't have to have any kind of a subscription to do that. We'll go over the credit system in more detail later, but under your account, you'll be able to see your available credits and the license string that will be generated so you can activate the software. Once you've created that account, you'll be sent a link to download the software just a simple, small install, not very large, because it's just an add-in for your Excel program. So it'll quickly download. And then when you open Excel, you'll find you have a new tab. 
And if you click on that Listware tab, this is what you'll see. We've got all the options for Listware processing. U.S., obviously, most people are going to be doing U.S. addresses, but we also have global if you're going to do international address validation. It also has built-in features for NCOA, which is National Change of Address, so it can use the licensed postal databases to find if any of your customer lists have moved and provided a new address. We'll go over these in future webinars. Express Entry is a is a keystroke, so as you type, it finds the address for you. Matchup is a deduping software, so you can find duplicates in your list based on various and complex criteria. We'll go over these in future webinars, but essentially, when you install Listware for Excel, all of these will be available to you. The main ones we're going to discuss this time are the basics and check, verify, move, and append are the main ones that most people will be using with Listware for Excel. Check checks the validity of your actual data. So this is the one that's essentially mandatory. You have to run check in order to be able to run the other sets. Check just verifies your address, checks the phone, email by syntax, things like that. will correct misspellings. The usual address standardization will be done. And once that's been done, then it can use the corrected data to run verify, and that shows matches between the individual elements of your records. So it'll check the name against the address, name against the phone, etc. Move will do uh, an entire webinar on that, I think, in the future, because that has to do with national change of address and getting new addresses for moved clients. And append will will do in the next one as well, where you can run your data, verify it, and then it can try to append additional information that you didn't already have. So the first one and the main one that you always have to run is check. And this just simply checks your data against all of our various data sources, such as USPS, National Database, various other consumer and business databases. And this helps you ensure that the data you already have is correct and in the right form. You can see here in the example we've given Melissa data address, it corrected the phone number into the format it was wanted. It took out typos in the email address and verified the address, corrected the city, the street name, etc. And in the example below, obviously, if it doesn't exist, then you know that finally and can, can start getting rid of records that are no good to you. Once you've done check and you have the good data, you can then run that against verify. And you can see in this example with our own address, it's it's verified. That's why the VR code, verified means the address and phone were found to match. So the company name and address and the address and phone were associated. It cross-references multiple databases to do this. So first it checks that the company is valid, the address is valid. Then it also checks if the phone number is associated with the company name, if the business name is associated with the address. And these, these VR codes, the verif verify codes, can help you to increase confidence that your, that your data is correct. If you know the address and business match, then you know this is probably a pretty good address record. And again, it can do the, the same by telling you when they don't match. So you know not to waste your time with records that are probably not going to be anything for you. Append we'll cover in deeper detail because it does quite a bit. We might have to add that to another webin webinar. Pardon. But Append can take the existing data, like company name in this example and street address, and using that, it can find the phone number that is associated with the company. So it can append data that you didn't have to existing records based on the data you do have. This is kind of a terrible looking screenshot, but it uh, we'll go into this when we show the software. This shows basically it'll color code your records. So the red ones are the ones where it could not find a match. It could not verify these, and it considers those to be bad. The not quite so red ones represent maybe had one or two problems, but are probably still deliverable. And you'll see those still received a plus four on the zip code. Usually that is reserved for if the address validated, but it couldn't validate the suite or the apartment or the secondary range. And when you hover over them, you'll see those, those codes displayed and, and what they mean. 
So the main reason to use Listware, obviously, is that it's the easiest thing in the world to install. Most people already have Excel. It's going to hit our web services, which are maintained by us 24-7, 365 days a year across the country and across the world in different server clusters. So there's no need to install anything on your machine. You don't have to do any kind of updates. All of that's handled on our end. You don't have to have a subscription. You just pay whenever you send a record to the service, and it's verified and sent back. So now we'll go through a quick demonstration where I'll just try and show basically those same steps in a, in a real-world demo. Just a second. Sorry for that clumsiness. So as we showed in the initial steps, you come to melissadata.com and you can see sign in. Once you click sign in, you can create an account if you don't already have one. And then you can come to the Listware page on our site for Excel and get the link to download. So you need to have an account so it can generate a license string for you. So you have to create the account first. Then you come here, download the plugin. The next step, you activate the free credits we give you so you can test it. And additionally, they have a promotion now where we give you a three, a thousand credits when you first start, and then each month we'll top that off to a thousand credits again. So that way people can can run it, test it, see what happens, and they without having to lose money in the process. And if you're only doing very, very few records, it'll, it probably won't charge you at all. This is the credit page. It's also on the site, and it's a link to that button on the previous page. You'd come here to activate your free credits, and then you'll get a 1,000 credits topped off every month. You can also buy additional credits, or under your account, you can set it to auto-refill credits. So when you run out of credits, it adds a certain number of your choice. So once you've run the installer, you plug in the license string. The next time you open Excel, you'll see you have Listware tab up here. And so for today, we're going to do US and Canada option. And you'll see once it once it loads this tab, you'll have this, this toolbar over here. And there's a tutorial. So if, if you forget anything or just want to be run through it again, you can run the tutorial. I'm just going to click Next. Next, we have to open a file. I've got this one ready, I think. So this is just a test database that should demonstrate some of the features. I recommend using this little toolbar, though it can be minimized over here. But this, first you highlight however many records you want to pr process. So you don't have to highlight the entire sheet. If you're using Excel, you can just highlight a certain number of records and then click Select Data to Process, so it'll know that's the range of records you want to process. This is a small file. It's 500 records. I'm just going to choose all of them. So once you click that, it tells you it's detected 504 rows, file name, etc. So that way, if you had a 50,000 list, you could still run 100 at a time, 1,000 at a time, whatever you wanted. When you click Next here, then you'll get to the operations that you could choose. Now we're going to do Check and Verify for this one. We'll save these other ones for future webinars because they're a bit more involved. So first you choose your processing options. And then on the next screen, you make sure it found your your uh, fields correctly. And it does appear to have done that. It usually does a fine job of recognizing your individual column names. But if for some reason it hadn't, you, you can set them manually as well, of course.
So having chosen our input columns, now we choose the output columns, and it will add these columns to your list. So it won't overwrite your data and you won't lose any data, but it will add new columns so you can scroll over to the side and see all new columns with appended data, and you'll be able to compare them against your original data. We can do options for full name. It already detected that automatically based on the headers. This time we're just going to do name and address just to give a basics. Here you can see there's a warning. You specified an output email, but not an input email. Since we're not doing append, it's not going to come up with new data. So I just won't do email then. There is no email column in this field, in this file. These are options for the types of reports it can create at the end. Those are entirely for your own use. You don't have to create them, and you can choose what it puts on them, but mostly just for your for your own use, not anything you would need per se. This is the final check everything before you run its screen, and then as long as you don't want to change anything at this point, you can just click process. Account information is on is available on many different screens, so you can review if you have enough credits. We'll save the changes. At this point, it's going to connect to our servers and start sending your records, usually about 100 a second. We normally recommend you try not to run other programs, if possible, or not opening and closing others, because the more resources it has available to it, the faster it will run. And you can see it's going to color code these. Good records are blue, bad records red. So far, we're up to 200 good records, 300 good records. So you can see it as it's processing, 400 to 500. Previously, you'd have to have done this all programmatically, but with this new listware for Excel, you don't have to do any of that, and you can still take advantage of our robust web services that are constantly running. You can send records to them anytime, 24 hours a day. So it completed. We can close that message that it's done. We can review or rescan the results if we like. You can see here there were 41 marked bad, so those are flagged red because it just couldn't find a match for those and wasn't able to do anything, so it's set those as errors. 504 were marked basically good, but 41 had address problems. And you can see now, if you scroll over, it's added all these new columns, and they're color-coded for easy reference. And you can see as you hover over it, it tells you the exact error codes or correction codes. AE stands for address error, AC stands for address correction, so you can get an idea of what it has done your data without actually changing your original data. And there's also these codes here, which are listed on the website, but when you hover over them, again, it'll, it'll give you a quick reference of what it did. So you can see suite name was changed to suite, suite range changed to one, address valid and deliverable. So you can use these in Excel to sort, so you can get all your best records on the top, you can use it to find which ones you, you no longer want to maintain because they don't seem worth it. And it's done that all the way down. So the red ones are the ones where it didn't find a match. Unknown street gives you the reason why it couldn't find a match. Here the street number was wrong. And as we mentioned earlier in the, in the slide presentation, the verify adds its own codes. So these are all the address check. This is the check codes, and these are the verify codes. So this verified the, the organization name, the company name, and the address are found together in various data sets, cross-references various data sets organization and address, partial organization name. So you can use these to determine how much confidence you have in a given record. And, and the more matches you find, obviously, the, the greater degree of confidence you can then have in that, that your data is accurate. 
And essentially, that's all we're going to do for the first one. We've showed installation and the basics of, of check and verify. Though I don't think we're going to have enough time to do a pen and move. Those will have to be in the next upcoming webina webinars. At this point, if there are any questions, we could take them. Please feel free to type them in at any point. Thank you, Tony. Another great presentation. Um, as he mentioned, we're going to go into the Q&A section of the webinar. So um, if you have any questions, please type them in now. I wanted to remind you again that I will be sending out a link to a recording of today's webinar, and you should expect to receive that via email by the end of the week. Okay, um, let's see, I'm waiting for another one. Okay, our first question is, uh, we have an ERP system with three generic lines for address. So it is address one, address two, and address three. Unfortunately, 100 different employees over 20 years typed in different data into those three fields. Can your tool help us resolve the addresses in these three generic lines? That's a good question. We do have other software that's specifically for doing that, though this one will do an address one and two. It might force you to run it twice if you had addresses in address three and you didn't want to just copy and paste them over. But it should be able to validate one address line, and if there's additional information in address two, it can combine the two into a good address. <laughs> Can you specify the format of data, like telephone numbers, etc.? Yes, you should be able to do that. So it'll it'll standardize normally the way that you would most commonly see, like the phone number with the parentheses, that sort of thing. But yeah, you, there are options, so you can choose how it standardizes phone numbers, emails, things like that. Okay, um, sometimes they put attention Greg Brown in address one and then the street address in address two. Can you, um, can your tool help us resolve those addresses on those lines as well? Yes, the, all of our products are designed to do that. So if, if address one isn't an address, it will automatically look to address two. Though generally speaking, what it will do is treat that as address one after that point. So attention Greg Brown might be parsed into not being used, and then it would just put the address in address one. Usually it will swap the two. So if address one's valid, it won't do anything with address two. If it if address one doesn't validate, and we'll check address two to see if there is additional information in address two that will resolve address one. Or if address one is fails and then address two is valid, it'll swap the two. So address one becomes the good address. So in this case, your example, if there was a name in address one and an address in address two, then it would swap them. So address one would have the address, and the name would just get put in address two. Um, phone numbers are entered in zip codes and vice versa. Will it fix it as well? well of course, it depends on the quality of the data, how, how <coughs> bad it is. But generally speaking, if your address, city, and state are valid, then it will append the correct zip code. So in your case, you could just have a blank zip code field. And as long as the addresses were valid, we would append the correct zip code and zip plus four when the address validates. That way, you could keep your, your phone number zip code field completely separate. Or you could format new fields, empty ones, as phone and zip. And we would append the correct one in both cases. Actually, there's a question about the um, enrichment capabilities of listware. Um, I just I can answer that question. I just wanted to let you know that um, in next month, in August 24th and the 31st, we'll be highlighting the enrichment capabilities of listware. Um, 
adding in missing contact info and demographic info. Um, okay, we have another question here. Uh, will it run spell checks on names? It, uh, I believe the answer is yes to that. It does check against giant databases of first names and giant databases of last names to verify the name. So when you get a, for example, in the background, you can see NS01. That means name status 01. That means the names were found. So they were validated. And if they had obvious spelling issues, it would correct them. But but there are so many variations of how names are spelled. It does have most of those and would accept most spellings, even if they weren't the conventional one. And again, any questions you come up with after this is over, you can always contact Tech Support and Melissa Data. We support all the products. You can just call us with questions or email us at tech at melissadata.com anytime. OK, uh, we have time for one last question. Uh, does it have multilingual capabilities? I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but it does. There are in the name and and last name type databases. It has many non-English names. It will do Spanish street names, as in California, New Mexico, Texas. If I'm understanding the question, then yeah, it would do that. Okay, um, thank you so much for attending our webinar. It looks like that's all the time we have right now. If you submitted a question that did not get answered, um, please contact Tony via email or phone. Um, his email address is tonyd at melissadata.com. Um, thank you again for attending today's webinar. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye. <laughs>